What's going on everybody, it's Codextual, and today we're going to be talking about do you have good line status coming from your internet provider all the way towards your modem? And if you don't, maybe this would explain the lag, um, the slowness, or why your internet keeps uh, disconnecting. So if you have Xfinity, uh, Cox, Spectrum, Roadrunner, anything that is a coax cable that provides you internet through that cable, then this video will apply to you. If you have DSL or fiber, uh, we're going to be talking about that in another video. So uh, be sure to check in the description down below because I that's where I keep everybody informed, send any links where anybody needs to go and any type of references. So if you guys can do me one big favor is to subscribe to the channel, hit the post notifications whenever I go live or start uploading a video, you'll be notified. If you have any questions, um, feel free to come on my live stream and ask me some nerdy questions or come hang out either or. So uh, be sure to definitely subscribe and share this with all your friends and you know like the video okay so now that's out of the way let's let's talk about, about the basics and please I, I know I'm not um, saying that everybody is incompetent but there's some people out there that fully don't understand so I created a simple illustration please don't mind this <laughs> but um, I suggest that everybody watches and listens through the entire video okay so when you first have internet problems, you make sure, you know, your connection cables are good. The power's plugged in. Awesome. So this whole illustration demonstrates from point A to point Z that if you do have wiring problems, you got to take consideration of all of these factors. Make sure on your cable modem, like there's no um, chewing marks or any loose cables if you have a crazy law mother-in-law who likes to chew on the cables for some odd reason and has a tinfoil hat around her head and be like the government's listening yeah you definitely uh, want to keep her away from the internet but um make sure you always check your cables this applies to the cable modem then to the house the inside the interior wiring from the interior wiring from the house to the service box where the service box is at that's where everyone's getting their internet from then to the central office so you got to take all of this in factors but one easy way to find out is you know if you have a straight good connection then everything's fine so we want to get a little bit more technical now. We're going to go back to this page uh, here in a second. We want to talk about our SNRs. This is the signal to noise. Basically, um, let's read out the description here. So uh, signal to noise ratio, abbreviate SNR or slash SN, is a measure used in science and engineering that compares the level of the desired signal to the level of the background noise. SNR defined as a ratio signal power to the noise power, often expressed in decibels. So decibels or noise margins, uh, dBs. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's break down the this nerdy concept and make it more English. So what it's saying is right here is these are the acceptable range. This means you have a good connection. So if we look at the downstream power and if anywhere, if it's anywhere between negative 15 dBmV to a positive 15 dBmV, so it has to be within that range, then you have a good connection. It's very acceptable. So if we go back towards our page here, and I'm not saying that if you have Xfinity, if you do, then this will work out for you. If you have a different type of modem or a different type of web page, uh, fiddle around with your modem until you get to something similar that looks like this. But for those who do have um, Comcast, this will work out in your favor regardless. It, it's all the same concept, no matter what company you're with. It's just a different design of a web page. But um, here I, I took some screenshots, you know, make sure that you log in with your username and password. Username is going to be admin, password is going to be password to get to your modem if you have Xfinity is 10.0.0.1. And let's go ahead and get that out of the way. And to get to the exact page is you're going to click on the drop down menu where it says connection, then the um, where it says Xfinity network. Yes, I did. Um, uh, take some screenshots. I just don't want to censor out any stuff. That's more editing. I'm kind of a lazy person If you can work smart and lazy at the same time do it anyways, so now we're on the page 
Now, back onto the point. This is going to be our downstream. And we have a lot of bonding values. We have up to 31 bonding values. Um, not every company has up to 31, so just letting you know. But these concepts still apply. So we want to check out our power level. Our power level, what? is needs to be within negative 15 through positive 15 within that range if it's any uh more negative or any more positive then that's this the, um, the modem is unstable all right so and it's best between if it's in the single digits it's best if it's in the single digits but this is still the acceptable range so that determines that you have a good signal so let's check out um our bonding values and let's see if it's within that range so far so good so if we keep scrolling right yeah it's still in the acceptable range and it's up to your responsibility to go through all of the bonding values so so far i i have a good downstream of the power decibels and let's go look at the upstream power so this is a little bit different now the upstream power needs to be within 37 dbmv or 55 dbmv so is it within that range if so then it's acceptable so 46 and there's four bonding values so what does it average out so it's within you know 47 so does that match up okay yes so i have good um dbmvs so that that's good so let's check about our snrs so if it's over 30 dbs so this is your noise ratio if it's over 30 dbs you're good so right there it's back on the downstream uh it doesn't show it on for the upstream but it does show it for the downstream okay so it's definitely above 30 dbs if it's any belower if, okay, so if it's below 30, then you have a um, noise problem, um, especially take consideration for the downstream and for the power. So this is something that if you were to ever call up technical support and be like, hey, you know, my power levels are off or my noise or my SNR is off, then they'll go ahead and check in on that. And this will also help them to understand where could the problem be at because they have more tools than us consumers to look at the back ends of system and try to pinpoint the location of the problem and as if it's something within the modem or if it's something within their own network uh, beyond the NID, which the NID is the network interface device, which is the NID is at your home. So um, one thing I also want to feel like it's important to say, um, let me move back over here. So. With the modem and the house, so right here is the NID. Um, if I create a little box right there, that's the NID. That's the network interface device. Um, and that's where everything is routed to from the service box to that little NID. So most companies will only work. Okay, so basically when a service technician comes out to your home and there could be that service fee charge and this is where you're like hey no i don't want that so they'll check up to the nid anything inside of your home such as the interior wiring and the modem um that's still that that's inside work that's going to charge you that's why they ask like hey you know anything inside of the home that's not our responsibility this is where things could be a little bit chargy but the technician will let you know before he goes inside so most companies do that but if you don't want that technician to come inside they will check up to the nid and that's all of their responsibility if you don't want to pay that extra, I don't know, 30, 100, or 30 bucks to 100 bucks, um, whatever the fees are to charge you whenever that technician comes out there. Um, so I just felt like you guys deserve to need to know that that most companies do this. So I'm not saying all companies, but just always be sure to ask questions and like is there a service technician fee? But um, I'm just letting you know. So now that we found out that okay we have good wiring so all of the wiring from the modem to the house to the service box to the central office every everything checks out i don't have any wiring issues all right awesome but if you do have wiring issues um the most thing that's in your control is the modem and the house make sure that you know the wiring is um awesome and if you know how to wire things awesome good for you um and also check out the nid if that's you know 
awesome. Unless if you can see like an exposed wires or something like that, um, then you know where the problem is exactly. So any of these four, well, I guess five now, any of these five factors can be, you gotta take consideration of those five factors. Is there a wire, there's a wiring problem somewhere. So start from the modem, then work away with the cables and the, you get the point. So a couple things I want to um, talk to you about is the unaired code word, correctable code word, and uncorrectable code word. I don't know if this is an Xfinity thing, but if it's a universal thing, basically what this means is, so unaired code words is a FEC error. Um, correctable code word is a H E C error and a uncorrectable code word is a CRC error. So if we move this out of the or actually, no, let's just put this over here. So what what's so important about these? If you look at the numbers over here, these are actually packets. So it's sending from the service box to your modem or you know from the CO to the service box. Mainly from the service box will generate these uh, numbers for you because that's where the packets are being sent from. So that's within your control. So what do these numbers mean? Well, unaired basically means it's FEC is, I, I don't know the exact abbreviation, but we're gonna go ahead and, uh, that's why we got Google, FEC. So, no, it's not the federal election, FEC errors. It, it is the forward error correction. So, in this abbreviation, while I was working for a ISP company, I should remember these terms um, of abbreviations, that is. So, <laughs> but um, forward correct, all right, forward error corrections. Basically, it means um, in simple English, let's just say that you are a customer and you go to Applebee's, right? And there's this new waiter or waitress and they're about to take your order and they feel confident and they're like, okay, so you ordered a fancy appetizer, example A. And I took that down on my little notepad. It went to the cook. It's like, okay, so they want example A. And the cook makes example A. Then I come back and I bring you what I thought you have ordered. But you didn't order example A. You've ordered example B. So I was like, okay, my apologies. Let me correct my problem. Go back to the cook and like, okay, there was a miscommunication error. So they want example B. Okay, the cook makes it and brings back the example B. Here you go. My apologies. So basically, and that concept is the forward correction error. It's it generates this packet that is not correct. So it regenerates that data. So if you were to for example, go to Facebook, right? And it doesn't load up a correct image or if it doesn't load up anything or if it just stops midway um, or if there's you experience some type of lag just for that quick millisecond, it's actually recorrecting itself. So you can actually get the correct value or the correct data. So if that makes sense. And the same concept kind of applies to this. So if we go to here, uh, copy that in and put it into Google. So it just indicates like a, there's a noise problem on your line. It's going to start to generate. Now, if once you start seeing this happen more, like if this number is way bigger than what it is and it's happening on all of the 31. So I seem to have a problem on 31 bond and my number one bond, but everything else in between that is fine. But if I was starting having more problems, then it's going to start generate a line problem. So it's still correctable, but until you start seeing all of the value bondings. Now, what about uncorrectable? Now this will, sh okay, so CRC are bad, is bad. You don't want CRC errors. The less CRC errors you have, the better. Now you may get some here and there, that's fine. But if you have a number as this big on all of your bonds or most of your bonds, that's a problem. It means it's requesting data 
from the host that you're trying to reach to. So if you're trying to watch your Netflix, but it keeps buffering and you can't watch your video and you start seeing these numbers start generating, that's a problem. You have a line issue somewhere. So you also want to take these into consideration as well. Even though that these may look fine, these uh, SNR, the power levels, even though that may look fine, you also still need to take in the these into consideration. Um, the more numbers it generates, the more of a problem that you have. So these ones are correctable. That's fine. But what's uncorrectable and keeps generating, that's not fine. There's a problem somewhere. Then that's how you can tell you have actually slow internet. There could be something wrong with that modem or, you know, the cable that's connected to the modem to the wall jack and the interior house of the um, cables to the NID, then to the service box, then to the CO, central office. So I hope that this clears up everything. Now, I can't really show any physical work because I know more of software than physical. Um, but uh, I hope that this gives you more of a ideal to look for if you actually have a wiring problem with Xfinity, aka Comcast, Spectrum, um, Cox Communication, anything that is a coax cable that's going, you know, if you got coax internet, okay? So this will apply to you. So again, um, I will have links in the description if you need to reference back to anything anything like that um i don't know what else to say at this point i'm just going to be repeating myself but i do hope that you guys learned something from this enjoy the video please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already give me a thumbs up and i hope to see you guys in the next video and you all take care peace Like I'm blind to all the hate I can see all of you waving I'm just acting like I can't